Hi there. Welcome to the Podcast Brunch Club podcast. I'm Adela, and I'm the founder of PBC. And today we're doing a quick roundup discussion about the January podcast playlist on friendship, which you can find at podcastbrunchclub.com slash friendship. Real quick, for those of you who are new, welcome. PBC is like book club, but for podcasts. We have over 70 chapters on six continents that meet up these days virtually, but usually in person to discuss a monthly podcast listening list. This podcast is an extension of those conversations. To join one of our local chapters or our global virtual chapter, go to podcastbrunchclub.com. And as always, I'm joined by Sarah, one of our OG PBC members. Sarah heads up our Houston chapter, and she also founded Audible Feast, a podcast review website and newsletter. Hey, Sarah. OG coming to you from Houston. (laughs) That was awesome. (laughs) So hello, everybody. Like Adela said, the theme this month was friendship. And we listened to five episodes, an NPR life kit episode that offers some practical tips for navigating the tricky terrain of making new friends, especially as an adult. I liked that one. An episode of therapy for black girls that explores the challenges and rewards of making friends a discussion about how race, identity, and racism have impacted friendships from the show Death, Sex, and Money, an episode of Other Men Need Help about why it is so hard for men to be vulnerable in their platonic relationships, and finally, a discussion on the next big idea with journalist Lydia Denworth about the science of friendship. So, Adela, are you feeling like you want to have more friends or less friends after listening to this? Ah. (laughs) Or how are you feeling about your friendships? Are you doing a good job? What's going on with your friendships? I think I'm lucky in my friendships. Um, I have a good group of friends here in Chicago. Um, But I think the playlist really made me realize that, like, I I really need to nurture my friendships and kind of – I think that the pandemic in some ways has been – positive for some of my friendships. I don't know if you had the same experience because um, like you're forced to keep in touch in a way that maybe, well, I guess you don't have as many excuses to not keep in touch as you did before. So, um, and also you kind of know that everybody's in the same boat, like nobody's really busy right now. So you don't feel like oh, if I reach out to them and I say like, hey, I'm just, you know, bored, you want to do something, there's not like that vulnerability of them being like, no, 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 I'm so busy, I can't hang out or I can't do anything because you know that they're they're not, you know? So um, cu- some of my friendships, I think, have like, we've reignited the our friendships over the, during the pandemic. How about you? Yeah, I think the pandemic has made friendship a struggle for me. Um, I think I realized that I kind of have maybe groups of friends based on what I do with them. So I have friends Mm -hmm. that like I almost always just see them in person. So I feel very sad about those friendships right now because we either haven't figured out a way or it's just like feels like, uh, I don't know. It's not that it's too much work, but it's like you don't you don't necessarily know it's hard to gauge how the other person feels about getting together period like are they even open to like a driveway happy hour thing or mm-hmm. you know or are you like it's like there's mm-hmm. so much like self doubt in in my mm-hmm. friendships <laughs> i guess right now but on the other hand i feel kind of the same as what you were saying where i feel like some of my friendships have really deepened Because like, let's say if they are in my quote unquote bubble, like if it's somebody that I'm seeing anyway, because our kids are going to the same thing. And, you know, I really value that, that I get that personal connection with people, that I get to see people. So like, I really try to take advantage of that time and like have a deep connection with someone because I'm don't get a lot of it. I don't get a lot of the, that face to face, um, and we've talked about this on the podcast before about being a, you know, kind of as many podcast brunch club members probably are an introvert that like you're okay with the extrovert sometimes, but generally mm-hmm. you need to recharge, you know, but I feel that I've found that I, um, I really 
do need some connection with people face to face. Like it's just not enough for me to text somebody or, you know, it's just a, it's been a, a good learning time, I guess, for myself about what friendship really means to me and what I need from a friendship. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I don't think they talked about in any of the episodes, but, rem- you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is like, I think in terms of a practical tip, I think what really worked for some friends like that I get together with regularly is that we actually made it a thing. Every Friday night at eight o'clock, we're, we we like have a Zoom happy hour and, or game night or whatever. Actually, ours is a game night. And like anybody who can come comes. And if you can't come, you can't come. And sometimes it's just like nobody can make it. So nobody comes. But we, it's sort of like a standing thing. And I feel like having that standing appointment, even if you, you don't go to every single one, it just takes the onus off of everybody. And it also just like reduces the the barrier of trying to like figure out schedules and whatever. So that was something that, yeah, I I totally agree. I, I haven't done that per se with like my non-work friends, but it's actually helped me. I do that with a couple of work friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, so one of my work friends and I have a, a standing like nutrition and health kind of check-in, but it's totally social, right? I mean, (laughs) um, But it's it's on the calendar, and so and it's during the workday when we're both working, anyways. But you know, every two weeks for twenty minutes, we just check in, yeah. and like because of that, I've developed a friendship with this person. Like, it, of course, it start we were friends sort of before, but you know, mm-hmm. because now we have that commitment to each other, this like longer term thing that's been going on for months and months. Yeah, it's a different relationship. So yeah, yeah. you're I like that. You're right. Yeah. And I have to shout out my friend Lisa, who's also part of uh, Podcast Brunch Club in Chicago, one of our very like our OG OG like members. She's <laughs> she she started Podcast Brunch Club like way back in the day with me. But um, she's been the one who's really been spearheading the sort of like Friday night happy hours with our friend group. Um, and then the other thing that we do with our friend group, which we actually started this in like 2018 and obviously took a break in 2019. But for the same exact reason is like we would you know, this is a group of primarily women who are all kind of friends with each other. Some, you know, individually, you know, together more than others and some more part of the group. Um, But we decided that like, oh my God, enough of the like, let's get together for a drink after work and like, or let's go out to eat. Like there's so many things to do in Chicago that we kind of wanted to like take advantage of it in a way that wasn't super stressful. So what we decided to do was we called it year of fun. So yo fun. We started a (laughs) Facebook group with our friend group and every person. So it was always the third Saturday of the month and every person in the group got like, they got assigned a different month. So mine was like February and I decided like, our activity for that day is we're going to go to an escape room. And so we went to escape room and like, Janelle decided that we were going to go axe throwing. So we went axe throwing and like whiskey tasting and like all sorts of like different kind of like off the radar activities. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody just wanted to be like, I, you know, I have no energy to plan a thing for everybody. So let's just go to a happy hour or like, let's just go to dinner. Fine. That's what you chose that month. And again, it was like, it was never an obligation that everybody go. It was just like, you know, that it's going to happen the third Saturday of the month. And then we, you know, we're going to do it. And so we decided at the end of last year, 2020, uh, that we were going to do it again in 2021. Good. Good. And so we started doing them. Now it has to be virtual. So mm-hmm. like we did like a craft night where like we all ordered this like adult crafting thing and just got on zoom and, you know, had wine and did it separately and what else did we we just did something else um i don't know we'll do like a wine tasting where you have to Mm -hmm. go to a specific wine shop and they give you like three half bottles and you know a tasting card or whatever so i think there's things you have to like that there you can do it's just it takes a little bit of effort and coordination and if you but if you can get it on your calendar as kind of like a standing thing i think it's really helpful. You know, the other thing, um, which ties also into one of the things I heard on one of the episodes and I won't be able to remember exactly where it was from, 
but it might have been from the the next big idea. Um, it also might have been from Life Kit, or they might have hit on the same topic. <laughs> but it was about how, like, friends, a friend does not have to be everything to you. You know, like that's one of the the best things that my mom taught me uh, when I was, you know, growing up was mm-hmm. like, look, I have friends that know that are the ones that I talk to about my job, or mm-hmm. I have friends that oh, this is, you know, who we, I talk about parenting with or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. but everyone does not have to be all of those things to you and not, you don't have to have a best friend in all of those areas or anything. It's just like taking some of that pressure off yourself to like, for yourself also, you don't have to connect with the other person on every single thing, but there are things that you can value about each other and you can build that friendship, um, I don't know. I just, I think that was, that's one of my things that I tell young, like women is like, this is something I wish I had thought of earlier that, you know, you don't have to put so much pressure into friendship. Like, you know. Yeah. You know, um, they talked a little bit about this, I think on the therapy for black girls episode. Um, but also, um, the idea that you're bringing forward, also pertains to significant others. And I think that's also a real big challenge is that like, in our minds, we think that our significant other is supposed to be everything to us, right? Like our confidant, our best friend, our lover, our, you know, like the person that we go to cry to the person that we go to laugh with, like everything. And that, you know, I think that this is kind of like at the crux of I think it's Esther Perel, who's like, you can't put that pressure on somebody like there's you know, I mean, if that's the kind of pressure you're putting on a relationship, it's no wonder that there's such a high rate of divorce, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're putting everything that you want from all of your relationships on one person. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you reminded me that I actually did um, grab a clip from that episode about friendship. So I'm going to play it here. Like why we spend so much time thinking about like dating and mating and that kind of thing and not so much time being intentional about our friendships? Yeah, that's a really good question. Like, I think that this is like sort of a strong social message that we get. And it's not something that like is innate to us to put relationships on such a hierarchy and put romance so much higher above friends. Even when we think legally, you know, like who's able to show up at the hospital with you? Who are you able to, you know, share joint income with? All of these sort of legal restrictions on who can be considered a close relationship and having friendships excluded from that legally makes me really think about like how I think institutionally as a society, we have created all of these policies that highlight, emphasize romantic relationships and don't leave as much room for really close, meaningful friendships to be as a part of these major life factors like income and hospitalization and even like you know we have a formal ritual for for marriage and closeness with our romantic partners but we don't actually have a formal ritual to to indicate that like this is a really close friend and this is someone that's really important to me and so I think it's sort of like a downstream consequence of that and of media that like we really focus tend to focus more on romance and the importance of romance even when friendship can benefit us so much. Yeah, I just thought that was like a really well put way of saying that, like, um, you know, the the society that we live in right now, it it prioritizes romantic relationships. So it's no wonder that we prioritize romantic relationships over friendships. And, you know, there are. There are things to think about and, you know, in that and that, you know, like, why does romance and sex define like the strength of a relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't, Mm -hmm. that's not what it's about all the time. Yeah. Well, and like different people are just able to give you different things, right? Like, I mean, like one person, like you said before, cannot give you everything you need in your life. Like you're lying. If you say that that's happening, (laughs) that's not possible. Like, because one person cannot be like this exactly perfect person for another person. Like it's just the, okay, pretty close maybe, but like the universe does not, does, I do not believe the universe works that way. Maybe that's too depressing and non-romantic of me, but, um, but yeah. So like a friend, a friend, friendship plays such a 
a role in helping each person like be the person that they are. Like, I don't know. I I just think it's just really integral to continuing to become a better person is Mm -hmm. having friends that challenge you, that support you. Um, And that clip actually made me think about the other men need help episode, uh, which was, you know, because they were talking about romance and friendship, but in a little bit different way, they were talking about, you know, guy, guy bromance is being like, you know, this like has to stay at sort of superficial level. But why? Why can't you like Mm -hmm. say that you love another guy? Like Mm -hmm. why? Like I love some of my friends Mm -hmm. deeply, but like that seems fine for me to say that. But it's all this terrible like homophobia that's embedded in our culture. It's just, I don't know. It was, I really, really liked that episode. I love that show anyway, but um. I thought it was just great. And I, I, a plug for our Slack channel, I was posting in the Slack channel for Podcast Brunch Club about how I want to hear more things like that. I really, really enjoy hearing about friendship between men. I think probably just because I just love that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just not valued publicly Mm -hmm. and I completely value it. I love it. I want my boys to be that way, yeah. you know? Yeah, I know. I think about it, you know, in terms of like the men in my life and whether or not they have deep, close relationships. And, you know, my husband doesn't. I wouldn't say like I don't think he has a best friend. Um, he is social. Don't get me wrong. Like he plays tennis and he has friends through that and he's pretty social through that. But, it's not like a super close type of thing. And then on the other hand, like my brother, he is still friends. I mean, he just turned 40 and he is still friends with the kids he went to like kindergarten with, you know, and they still have like monthly dinners with all the spouses and the kids now, you know, and they do stuff. But even still, I don't think that their close relationships, like mm-hmm. even though he's known them since he was, you know, five. I don't know that. I don't know. I would have to ask him if he considers them to be like close mm-hmm. relationships where he could like really confide in somebody. Because I do know that when my brother was going through something pretty intense, I was the person he went to. Right. I don't yeah. actually one of actually one of his friends. I think he did go to. So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to think about men's relationships and like their own, whether or not they value them. And even when they do have friends, like how deep and close they are, you know, I mean, so the other side of this, and I didn't get to include this kind of episode in the playlist, but I was kind of um, thinking about it is like, what about like ending friendships? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think we've all had, you know, an experience with that of like, how do you end a friendship? And, you know, why? Yeah, I feel like there could be a second part two of the life kit uh, because the life kit was like, here's how you make friends. And (laughs) And then, (laughs) yeah. yeah, And then the second part might be, here's how you dump friends. They might have (laughs) It's okay. It's okay to end a friendship, you know, and it happens in life. And it's just, yeah, I remember having gone through that and like, you don't want to, you know, the ghosting feels just terrible, uh, but then it's the easier route. Totally. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But then on the other hand, like, you know, does that cause, you know, some long-term regret or some feelings yeah. for yourself even? Like, ugh, I, I wish I had whatever, fill in the blank. I wish I had talked about it directly with the person, but that's hard. So yeah. um, we need, so NPR's Life Kit, please, we need a part two on <laughs> ending friendships. Look, they might have one. I'm pretty sure that at least one of the episodes that we listened to, there was another uh, episode in their feed that dealt with breaking up with friends. It might've been Mm -hmm. the therapy for black girls episode about like what to do when you need to break up with a friend. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely listened to some episodes about that over the years because I care about that topic. And I think about that with people like, 
I don't know, I tend to have a pretty small group of friends and then, you know, if it feels, you know, it feels so painful when you feel like this person is just not, it doesn't, it's not working, yeah. you know? Um, so that's something I've thought about a lot over, over time. But yeah. So what did you think of the death, sex, and money episode? Uh, I remember listening to it when it came out. I did listen to it again. And I think that it was fabulous to put yeah. those th recordings on tape. And uh, I wish they would do more of them. I think yeah. it was really great for people to be honest with each other. Um, I just loved the conversation between the two women that was kind of towards the end. Um, the one there where she was segregating her friends. Is mm -hmm, that the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then they just were like open and honest about yeah. it. And, you know, I'm sure that really helped, you know, yeah. like, but you know what, if it also, if it doesn't help, that's also okay. Like, yeah. it's like, you, there's no wondering. There's no, mm -hmm. like, where do I stand? There's that, that's, that's a, a tricky thing to feel. Yeah. Um, it made me think about my own friendships and like whether or not I have interracial friendships and like, I don't, I'm an into, and you know, my husband is Taiwanese and I'm white, so I'm in interracial marriage, but in terms of interracial friendships, I'm trying to think. And I think it's not, the, I don't know. Like I always, I, <laughs> I listened to that episode a while ago, too, and I remember talking to my brother about um, about this, and I was like, you know, they kind of need, like, a Tinder for friendships, and I know that Bumble has a, like, BFF, like, it's Friend. called, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Bumble, it's called Bumble BFF, but, like, I could also see there being, like, a, a something, for, I, I, this sounds so bad, but, like, for interracial friendships. You know, like just a way to to kind of expose yourself to different types of people in a way that maybe is outside of your normal, you know, mm -hmm. life, just like the way you walk through life, right? You might just not be yeah. interacting with people in that way. And I know that well, there are ways to do that yourself. Mm -hmm. But like that's but effort. It's also like it's especially like if you're if you're white, like that's like it's just you are around white people. Like so it's like you like as a white person, you need to go out of your way mm -hmm. to make to do something, right? Like so that's in itself like it requires the inertia to do that to mm -hmm. say like, oh, this might not be comfortable for me or whatever. And that in my opinion, like my very liberal opinion, that should not be on the person of color to do, you know, oh, no. it should be on, you know, like, and oh, it's just sure. so, yeah, it's just so, but it, but it's, but <laughs> it's hard. So yeah. we take the easy way out and we just, <laughs> but I'm even thinking like, what does that look like in a practical way? Like for me without being like, Hey, I want, I want to have more black friends. Right, like, so how do I, I'm, I'm very obviously to, like, like the yeah. few black people I know and be like, Hey, Hey, we should I, be friends. <laughs> do you want to be friends with me? I, I, that'd be weird for them and for me. Yeah. And yeah, but at the same time, like, I, and I don't know, like, my, I, I don't know, like there's gotta be a good I way I think of doing it's this. about, I think it's about like finding, um, you know, honestly, I, I think, podcast brunch club is really good for this purpose like i think that it has helped me meet a broader variety of people that like literally we have nothing in common except for podcasts so mm -hmm. that could be anybody mm -hmm. um of any economic you know mm -hmm. whatever means it could be anybody from any geography whatever um any background and um i mean so things like that, where you're put, you're going in, you're, you have to go out of your comfort zone of what you always do, but you have to try something new where you might meet new people. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a, a potential way to find mm -hmm. more people you might have something in common with that you could then maybe build a friendship on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. Go podcast brunch club. Yeah, that's right. Our, that's my, that's, <laughs> I really do feel that way. Like I feel... I don't know. Yeah, I just I feel it's it's opened up more opportunities for me to be exposed to different types of people. And yeah, I appreciate I, that. I 
I love hearing that. The thing about it, though, and I'm just going to push back a little bit, is that it's still a group conversation. How do you then like walk up to the person in that group, wh- whatever race they are, whatever gender, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like that you're just like, I really like what that person had to say. And I really would love to be friends with them. Like, how do you then just be like, hey, I know we're doing this group thing together. Uh, do you want to go get coffee? Because I actually was in that position when I moved because I grew up in in Illinois. And then when I was in my early 20s after college, I moved to DC without knowing anybody, nobody. And like, it's really hard to make friends. I mean, they talked about it after college, right? Because you're not in I think one of the things that um, that the therapist on um, on therapy for black girls mentioned was that uh, the ingredients for friendship are continuous unplanned interaction and shared vulnerability. Um, and so like, that's a hard thing to like manipulate if you don't have like classes to go to, you know, like maybe mm-hmm, it's just work. Mm-hmm. And like, at some point you don't want to be vulnerable at work maybe or whatever. So like those are hard. It's hard as an adult. And I, I do remember having to like go up to people and be like, Hey, do you want to go get, you know, coffee or a drink? And, and like people being a a little weirded out by it, of them being like, well, yeah, like let's all go. Cause I don't, you know, you're weird. (laughs) Well, yeah, I think, I don't know. Having, I guess sort of having, I have a a new friend, uh, a, a friend who's not white and, So like I am sort of like fresh into this experience of like building a friendship with a person who doesn't come from the same background as me. And um, I think you're right about the like being vulnerable thing. Like that's how do you – it depends on the circumstance of how you know them. Mm -hmm. Like what – like how do you get to that point without – um, and maybe this is why it's even harder for men because that's just not the that's not the first thing that comes to mind is being vulnerable, mm-hmm. right? Um, for most men, not all. Um, but it's also that like re- repetition of like seeing the person mm-hmm. as well. Those the things that you mentioned that's that's totally true. Um, but I think going back to what maybe what I was trying to say in the beginning is it takes a it takes a leap of faith. It takes a it you have to take a risk and say like. There's that one thing that you're you're it's gonna be a failure or it's gonna be maybe it's the start of some friendship, but it's like a would you ever wanna meet up for lunch? You know, like yeah. right now we can't do that. But <laughs> yeah. So it's a little harder right now. But um, you know, I don't know. It's just a it's a it's a there has to be like a dis- defined like I'm going to take a risk and see you know. Yeah. Maybe this person will be my potential future BFF. I just don't even know. <laughs> so, I anyway, might have to try um, out that Bumble BFF thing just because like maybe, I always liked yeah. I mean, I also don't have a lot of friends in my immediate area. Like most of my friends are in Chicago and I moved out to the suburbs. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm always interested in meeting new people. But that's also why I started Podcast Brunch Club. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> other people yeah. aren't. But um. Let's just take a listen to some audio clips from from our community members. We grab these with permission from the conversation at one of the virtual chapter meetings. And if you want to join us at one of those meetings, you can sign up at podcastbrunchclub.com slash virtual dash chapter. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jenna. I'm in State College, Pennsylvania. Um, I co-lead the virtual chapter with Noemi. Uh, and I really enjoyed this playlist. I found myself thinking about two things. Um, one is how do you define a friendship? Like at what point does someone become your friend and and how has that changed um, in the pandemic given that we're all seeing each other so much, you know, predominantly virtually these days. So how does that, how does that impact how you define a friendship? Uh, and then I also liked, um, this came up the most, I think in the, the next big idea and, and the life kit, but it was kind of a theme throughout that, you know, um, everybody, you know, people tend to like us more than we think we do. And I think we also all have this assumption that other people maybe have more friends or a bigger social circle than they do. So both of those things together combine to, I think, 
make us shy or kind of intimidated to reach out and in initiate new contact sometimes. So I've been trying to be more mindful of that as I think about the different friends and people in my life. Um, it's Ashling, and I live in London, um, but this is obviously an Irish accent, and I loved the Therapy for Black Girls episode. I thought, um, like Sarah said, it kind of crossed over with Life Kit and like really practical advice, but kind of dug deeper, especially on um, racial identities, how that ties into friendships and the different selves one brings into friendships. And um, I just think I'm really looking out for Marissa's um, book whenever it comes out platonic. I was just, I think friendship is something that is something we're all thinking about in lockdown. And um, yeah, it was really, really helpful. I thought it was really interesting how asking for help is a reflection of self-love. That really stuck with me. For me, part of new friendship is always with I guess a calculation about how would the group come because we always we're always meeting socially together so if mm -hmm. i meet a guy i like and we hang out but then it's always going to be like well we should get our wives together but then if alice doesn't hit off perfectly with the wife it's like well it's kind of like well we can't we're probably not going to meet a ton as a group together so now every time i want to meet with this friend it has to be alone which is going to be rarer than if we all, let's say we found a perfect match where like the guys get along and the girls get along and then we can meet up together and then we can just always socialize. But it hasn't, no one knew has been that way. And so we default to like establish relationships from the past. And of course I get along with all the husbands, but none of us are like, none of us would probably stand in each other's weddings. We're not BFS. We're just like, okay, we've, we've become friends simply through time and having seen each other and letting the girls socialize. And we're just kind of hanging on the sides. One more factor I think also is, is because I am, I'm like friendship starved. So I need to find someone perhaps who is at least someone in the degree of friendship starvation as I am, because yeah. Just I, met, I had this one friend, I had this one friend, he actually ended up moving away. He was a kind of my one friend, but he had many good friends and I was probably one in his rotation, Yeah. but I still had a, a stronger need for more male friendship and he was married he had four kids like I like it was just like he couldn't be he couldn't fill my starvation yeah <laughs> so That's how hilarious. do I find somebody who has the degree of friendship hunger as I do <laughs> while maintaining all the different balances that are in play here yeah and that's something that I noticed in the social group that I created is that it wasn't like, obviously I created it because I want, that's what I wanted. <laughs> and so it was for me, but what has been interesting is over time to see people who were regulars in that group, who they have become friends. So they didn't create yes. the group. They joined it. They didn't know anybody. They showed up and they showed up and, and it's something I think you said consistent, right? The people who pop in one time and expect to have a friend, that's not ever going to work or they come in like a couple times a year, mm -hmm. we're happy to have you, thanks for being here, but they're mm -hmm. not going to build that friendship. But the people who came, like we used to do coffee shop co-working sessions where we'd meet at a coffee shop and everybody, so a lot of the people in my group are self-employed or work from home even before COVID and, or we're looking for a job. And so we would meet in a coffee shop, say hi, check in with each other for 10, 15 minutes. And then we would all just work on our own things independently, like not necessarily even having conversation, but just being in the same space. And then at the end, we would, you know, before we say goodbye, we'd chit chat for, but people would find things that they had in common. Like, oh, these two people happen to have memberships at the same gym and they like to swim. Great. So then they started meeting for swim dates, mm -hmm. you know, or, mm -hmm. but, but they had to show up week after week to discover that about each other in a random conversation that they didn't know they were members of the same gym. Mm -hmm. And then once they discovered that, then they could start having swim dates. And then someone else who didn't have a gym membership was like, oh, well, maybe I should join that gym too. And I like to swim. Like, and, and so it's like having those things in common 
mm-hmm. but you you do have to be there and then you have to be able to be the one to be like oh hey I go to that gym too do you want to have a swim date so that's where the vulnerability thing because it doesn't have to be vulnerability doesn't have to be crying or like oversharing I think was another topic that she talked about in the therapy for black girls um mm-hmm. thing like at what is the point where it's like too too much and you're actually pushing people away by by oversharing mm-hmm. but it can even just be that vulnerability of saying like hey would you like to meet up for this because the person could say no nah, I'm good I like swimming by myself Okay, so before we diverge to talk about our latest podcast finds, I'd like to tell you about Immigrantly. It's a podcast about anyone with a tie to the immigrant experience. Immigrants are the living embodiment of the fact that politics are personal. But how do policies affect immigrants as human beings? How are identities constructed? And how do those experiences affect relationships? Immigrantly presents the human aspect that is so often missing from conversations about immigration. Conversations on Immigrantly are complex and often messy, but they are never boring. Subscribe to Immigrantly on all streaming sites. Now, Sarah, what podcasts do you want to recommend this month? Well, I think last month you brought up I'm Not a Monster, Mm -hmm. which is a joint show between BBC and Frontline. Um, And I so I put it on my list, but I got a super long queue. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I listened to like one episode, I was totally hooked. So just a plus one for I'm not a monster. It's about a person who, um, oh, let's just say she was living in in Syria, and you know, there's a lot of controversy around what she was doing there. Um, So anyway, it's a great investigative journalism. Yeah, absolutely great listen. Um. Glad yeah, you like it. Really, really good. Yeah. Thank you for the recommendation. Sure. And then also on a little lighter note, I <laughs> have been listening to Hello Ranger. Um, I'm pretty sure this is an independent podcast, which I always like to recommend. Mm-hmm. And um, Hello Ranger, it used to be called something different, um, but now it's Hello Ranger because the the couple who produces it have turned it into more of a brand. So now it's a podcast and a social network and a blog. Um, and they're this couple who are huge, huge fans of all the national parks in the U.S. and they travel all over to them. Um, I find them to be very charming and they just seem to know all of these strange little things about national parks. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, I went on a, my solo trip. I drove around to a few national parks. And so I think that's when I first started listening to these guys before. But, um, you know, I just, I was like, oh, that sounds like fascinating. It totally makes me want to go to all of the places that they mention. And um, they talk about what's, you know, are there restaurants nearby or is it totally isolated? Um, Is there a particular hike that they did that was like the best vista they could ever have possibly thought of Mm -hmm. or whatever? So um, it's just awesome. Like they're, they're really charming. I find them really charming. And um, I just really like the show. And I just learned when I was researching them today, I was I just learned that it's more than just the show. It's this social network too. So cool. people who are into national parks. So yeah, I don't, it's a good one. I'm going to have to listen because I, I, I like nature podcasts and I like national parks, but I feel like it's just going to make me have that longing even more <laughs> than I already do. Wanderlust. Which, yes. yeah, which I don't know if I need like a a boost on that right now because I feel a little stuck <laughs> in Chicago. Well, you know, even some of the things that they were saying, I was, I don't remember what I was listening to recently, but um, they were saying all these facts like, oh, well, this one used to be a national monument and now it's a national park. Like, I, I, it, I don't know. Things like that are cool. Yeah. Like, I, I am interested in the, that evolution of how something became a park and they'll explain like, oh, that got elevated for this reason. And no, cool. I don't know. I, I think it's cool to learn about nature, like you said. Nice. Um, So my recommendation is uh, a show called Committed. It's a show about relationships that have like overcome some pretty intense obstacles from like disease to infidelity. And they're just discussions with the couple about their relationship, how they met, like what they went through and how they overcame it. Um, They really are like really, it's really good. That's a great recommendation. That's a great show. Yeah. Yeah. And with Valentine's Day coming up, it's not like cheesy or anything. It's not, it's just like really 
heartfelt, I would call it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the other thing I wanted to recommend was actually two episodes in a a podcast. And I probably have recommended Endless Thread before on this show. I don't know. But Endless Thread uh, is from WBUR. And it's basically like about Reddit. But it's like they, they find these random Reddit posts. And sometimes they're really stupid. Like they're really like funny, stupid. Like one of them was, I swear about like, how is glitter made? Or like, why is there a shortage of glitter? And what is glitter even, you know, like things that are just like fun to learn about, but just don't matter. And others are like very, very serious. And of course, because I'm a pretty serious person, um, I am recommending two episodes that are pretty serious. One is called Things Are Bad. And the other one is called Update Things Are Bad. So it's it's a two-parter. <laughs> it's not uplifting? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> it's pretty All self-explanatory. Right. Things are pretty bad here. Um, <laughs> so it's actually a conversation with this guy named uh, Indy Samarajiva. And he had written an article on Medium that went into basically like he's Sri Lankan and he lived through the Sri Lankan Civil War. And he was basically like, hey, America, so... Um, what you're living through right now is very similar to what I was living through in the Sri Lankan civil war. So like you're headed that way. And like, if you think that if you're wondering if you're collapsing, it probably means you are collapsing. And so like, it's pretty, pretty scary, but he's really, he's got a really unique perspective and he's, he's just got a really charming way of saying things. And he's got great analogies. I always appreciate somebody who can put together a good analogy. But um, the first episode, Things Are Bad, was uh, probably a couple months ago. And then the update, Things Are Bad, happened after January 6th with the insurrection of at the Capitol. So it was a kind of like, hey, what are you thinking now? And he's like, yeah, so not super surprised, you know, <laughs> which, Ugh. yeah. Um, but it's a it's I think it's really interesting because he's lived through through it and he mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. saw the start of it and the end of it and has some good insights to share. So mm-hmm. those are my two recommendations. Um we also get recommendations on the Slack if you want to join. Um the link that I put out there sometimes expires. So if you want an invitation, uh just email me at Adela, that's A D E L A at podcastbrunchclub.com and ask me to send you the invitation link for Slack. And then if you have any other thoughts or podcast recommendations that you'd like to share, send us an audio clip to podcast at podcastbrunchclub.com. And finally, our podcast playlist in February is on the Black Experience in honor of Black History Month. And you will be able to find the list at podcastbrunchclub.com slash black experience. You can also join our newsletter and get the monthly playlist delivered directly to your inbox. Subscribe at podcastbrunchclub.com. Thanks for joining us this month. Happy listening. Thank you for listening and being a part of the Podcast Brunch Club community. Do you have any thoughts on our discussion this month? Send a message or voice memo to podcast at podcastbrunchclub.com. PBC is a passion project, and we rely on support from our global community to continue bringing people together in person and online. So if you feel like PBC has contributed to your life in any way, please consider becoming a patron or making a one-time donation. Go to podcastbrunchclub.com support for more information. If you're interested in becoming an organizational partner, go to podcastbrunchclub.com sponsors. A quick thanks to our early partners. Podbean. For one free month of podcast hosting, go to podbean.com slash PBC. Podchaser, the IMDB of podcasts. Listen Notes, a podcast search engine. Critical Frequency, the podcast network for everyone else. The Venn Media, a weekly newsletter for curious minds. And Lentigua Williams and Company, podcast network, telling stories in the seams of society. Finally, some credits for this episode. Katie DeFiori is our audio editor. Music is from Chad Crouch and Miss Ayal Ghana, downloaded from Free Music Archive. I'm Adela, founder of Podcast Brunch Club. And as always, thanks and happy listening. <laughs>